get set, go. It's time to hit the mark. This that show you need to know about. We set ourselves apart. Sports talk at the pinnacle. We got all the knowledge covering every level. Helping these young men get to college. Got the coverage of a DB. Vision of a QB coming at you like a DN. Let all of that sink in. Working in the weight room. We can't take no days off. Doing drills when they not looking. That's what make us stand out. Don't worry about how much time is left. We got it planned out. Execution elite footwork. Nasty when we running routes. Accuracy off the chain. We've been on it from the start. Reaching for the sky. Hitting the bullseye. We on the mall. What it do, it's Wednesday, you know what it is, you know what time it is. It's the On Your Mark Show, powered and sponsored by Epic Sports Apparel. Every player I compete live from the Fishbowl Radio Network, for Texas. You know what it is, thanks for tapping in. Listen, we're going to take you on another level today. What do you look for when you a, you know, a, one of the guys, top guys in the game, in the camera game, video production, all of that kind of stuff. Hammer Media is in the house as well as... Eric Carlson and my guy Coach Jay on the road in Wisconsin getting it in. Listen, you need to tap into this because we're going to go behind the lens first and then we're going to talk about some prospects. Uh, of course, where is the hammer? Where is he going to be? Where is Eric going to be heading into the season? And also what you need to look for. If, hey, if you're an aspiring photographer or inspiring videographer or a guy that's, uh, you know, we call them creatives, there's a big market for it here in Dallas. Uh, you know, I could have a, a room full of guys that I know that, that are into this game. You definitely need to tap into that. And plus, listen, when they give their information to reach out for them, you want to get these guys because this is these are the best in the game. This is what they do, and that's why they're on the On Your Mark show. Eric, how you doing? I'm doing well. How are you? I'm doing great. Hammer, what's good? Hey, man, what's popping? Hey, let's get into it, man. First, Eric, uh, tell me a little bit about what you do and how you got into uh, you know sports photography. Yeah, man. Um, well, I got into it because I've got boys. So they'll drag you into it. I just uh, I've been shooting for about twelve years, and um, they were coming up doing sports, and it was just something for uh, for me to sort of engage in what they were doing, and uh, it's been a fantastic gift. I have a son who uh, just graduated from Highland Park last year, and I was able to shoot all of his games uh, through high school, and uh, now he's going on to play at Oklahoma, and um, it's a preferred walk on, and hope to continue it there as well. Great. That's awesome, man. Congratulations. Thank you. Now, you heard what he said. Highland Park. If you don't know where Highland Park is, it's in the Metroplex, Dallas, Texas, one of the premier programs in the state. He's got a chance to go to the next level. Let's we'll touch on that just a little bit because yeah. that's an interesting story as well. Hammer, yes. tell me about it, man. How'd you get involved? Well, I would say about almost 10 years ago, um, I was in Prosper, Texas. Prosper, Texas. And uh, just started with the little middle school team, seventh grade team. Uh, that particular team is the team, the 23 class that just went to the top four and uh, played against Duncanville. So I was lucky to get a, a group of athletes as talented uh, as they were. Um, so, yeah, I kind of started with a little uh, Canon T3 Rebel. And uh, that's how I met this guy right here on the sideline uh, about eight years ago. Absolutely. And, and you've been doing it fine, great, off, off, man, just off the charts job. And, you know, this is why, you know, I, I would consider him in my circle. We talk on a regular basis and, you know, uh, we've been working together for a while. We started back actually with Friday Night Glory and then we went to the old coach as well. So we've been around. Uh, you know, the Dallas high school media for a long time, probably within 10 years at least. Yes. And, you know, we've been kind of rubbing elbows as well, uh, you know, as well as Coach Jay. Uh, so these are the things that, you know, happens behind the scenes. But, uh, you know, but first I'll come to you, Eric. When you're in the in the moment, uh, you're getting ready to shoot, uh, you know, how do you prepare? Tell me what you're, you're looking for, you know. You know, it also depends, you know, on the environment, you know, weather, night, day, things that you look for behind the scenes, uh, you know, when you're looking into the lens and trying to photograph an athlete? Yeah. Um, one of the comments that I get from a lot of people that they enjoy, um, especially from my Instagram feed, is they feel like they're at the game. So it really starts before the game starts. I love to capture all of the stuff that's going on, the cheerleaders, the drill team, the coaches, the refs, all the things that are going on before. Um, 
you know, a lot of times, probably a lot like you do when you cover the sidelines, you can look out at the way that the teams are preparing, and you can tell a lot about how the game's going to go when you see how those teams are preparing. Same thing for me with photography. I'm looking for people who are going through the repetitions, trying to get that type of uh, photograph before the game starts, um, and just get a sense for who's hot, who are they going to be going to, uh, who should I keep an eye on. Absolutely, and that, that's kind of what I'm looking for. That's why I like to get there early, watch them warm up. You can kind of see, you know, how everybody's moving. The coaches, uh, you know, uh, you know, good thing that what Hammer does and, and you guys do is you capture the essence of the game, uh, the cheerleaders, the band, the parents, the booster clubs, the, the student sections. All of those things go into a Friday night, especially here in Texas, that's big. Uh, just speak on that a little bit, Hammer. Well, I'm, I also kind of do the same thing. I like to get there early. Um, so I started uh, about a year and a half ago uh, capturing the team coming off the bus. I try to find out what time they're going to arrive at the stadium. Them coming off, getting their uh, their bags, them, you know, walking, walking down the tunnel. I mean, I... I haven't really seen photographers in high school shoot that particular look. I know in college, they're coming off the Greyhound bus in their suits and they have their little headphones on. I'm like, I need to translate that into high school. Right. So, you know, I'm in the bushes, you know, I'm saying (laughs) they they, they getting off the bus and there I am, you know. And uh, the other thing is I I like to get them when they're, they're, they're getting taped up. They're joking. You get different uh, expressions and stuff like that. And, and depending on where they're doing it, I get different shadows and different looks. And then from that point on, I, I, I get to go to the the locker room in the pregame. Pregame is my thing. I mean, I try to hustle. Uh, I, I try to get my sweat on, so to speak. Uh, and try to get as many pictures as I can as that pregame because my sun is right, the sun is shining through the through their shield, and I, I'm just getting looks that I really can't get, and I can't get that close to them as far as when the game starts. So I use that opportunity to take advantage and get as much as I can. Pretty much know all my kids. And if you're with the team, you know their format. You know the DBs are going to be on this side. You know your linemen over here. And the particular stadium that I shoot, which is in Denton, they got these shadows, man. So I got to follow the sun. And if my DBs are out in the sun, I'm, I'm over there. You right. know what I'm saying? Absolutely. And, and I might not be where they're in the shadows because I'm not going to get that same effect. Absolutely. I mean, and that's what – you know, makes you can tell a hammer shot from anybody else's. It just has a unique look, a unique feel. Uh, you know, a lot of people try to emulate that, but it's not the same. You know, it, it just has a certain look. And I can even tell it when it's yours and I don't have to look at it. I know it is before I even know it. It just has a certain resonance about it and a feel, you know, a look. And it's captured. It's like a moment in time. And you've gone on to have, you know, Under Armour, Sports Illustrated, uh, you know, uh, posters and – uh, Denton, uh, Denton Ryan on their last state championship run. Uh, those type of things have been epic for you. Let's talk about that a little bit. I, you know what? I, I, I'm just lucky. You know, I don't – I'm, I'm just around – I happen to fall into, uh, you know, Coach Bowman, shout out to Ryan. Absolutely. High school. Uh, him and I are really good friends. We met years ago when the son, Billy Bowman Jr., was at uh, middle school and Prosper in seventh grade. I, I just kind of fell on, fell into that. Uh, on the sideline shooting Ryan. Right. They just happened to have a team. Absolutely. And I'm looking at Eric over here because you, you know Ryan and Highland Park. Yeah, I, I, I just, see him kind of yeah, fidgeting yeah, yeah, a little yeah, bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, uh, we, Arrival a little yeah, bit. Yeah, so, yeah. Um, you know, so many years I had to go home uh, defeated. Right. But, you know, yeah. 2020, let's go 2020 because yeah. I was their uh, photographer. That they, the, Just the uh, behind the scenes and being around – uh, at least f- five to seven athletes that are, are going to be going big time, and, and we all know that in the, in the next year or two. But um, so I was just lucky to be a part of that uh, when, they, when they made that march and, and they played that, that really epic game um, against Highland Park, that 2020 
you know, yeah. and, and I was there to capture some of that. Right. And then, uh, and then they went on to win state. So I, and, and then, you know, I'm with, with the Geyer and then their runs to state with, with Arnold Jackson and just, I'm just, uh, I guess it's the right, right place at the right time. Well, the timing has been perfect, and, and you can see it in the shots and stuff. And, Eric, I'm sure you've been on those runs with Highland Park, uh, you know, the times he's talking about, JSJ, that yeah. particular time. Just talk about that, uh, you know, and how you capture that in a moment in high school football. Those are epic moments. Yeah, well, uh, let me share an interesting story about <laughs> Hammer because I know this guy real well. I know you do. And, um, <laughs> and – I and, and this would be advice to anybody who wants to get into photography, action, sports. Um, when I first met him at that Prosper game, my son was in seventh grade. And so that's that 2023 class. Right. And, um, man, I knew immediately how passionate he was about it. And he had a little kit lens and a cannon. He was, you know, just getting into it. Right. But he immediately started, you know, we connected on Facebook. And he starts asking all these questions. I'm like, man, this guy's really passionate. And I watched him just explode. And so those pictures, when you say that's a hammer picture, that's because hammer's down on the ground shooting. I up hadn't with even a wide got angle. to that part. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's a passion thing. So anybody who has the passion to do this, man, I encourage them to get out there because that's that's 90 percent of it. Just loving it and having the passion for it. Because I see a lot of people out there shooting and I don't know what they're doing. You know, they're just kind of sitting in a chair at the end zone with a big, long lens. Right. And, um, and it, you know, but that's why those pictures look so different. Um, relative to – that's when I really first started getting into the high school right. level was when um, Highland Park was going on those state championship runs. Absolutely. And at that time, since I didn't have, you know, anybody on the varsity team, I just started shooting the playoff games. Right. And I just was the benefactor of being a part of some really great teams and some really great games. Absolutely. Yeah, it was fantastic. And I mean, John Stephen Jones, I mean, to be able to watch him do what he did, I mean, Absolutely. he could extend a play like nobody I've seen. Right, right. And a remarkable player. Uh, you know, I, at that particular time, I was covering Denton Ryan a lot. And, uh, you know, Spencer Sanders gave, gave, uh, I forgot Gabe's last name, but Gabriel, oh, Gabriel Douglas, uh, Billy Bowman was like a freshman or sophomore mm -hmm. on those teams. Mm -hmm. uh, JT was uh, a true freshman, I right. think, at the time. Hadn't right. even blossomed to where he was. I was around those teams, uh, you know, both times that they lost to Highland Park, uh, you know, Spencer ended up getting injured. Uh, but those were some phenomenal teams, and that was my pick to state. And John, John Stevens just broke their backs every time. I, I would like to just jump in here for a moment. I just, uh, you know – not only that we just shoot and we we uh you know highland park and he he he's a part of it and and these didn't teams and i'm a part of it when these when these guys lose these big games i'm telling you i it, it, it crushes you as a photographer you absolutely know? i mean i wasn't on the field yeah but this last time when DeSoto beat guy yeah i couldn't shoot <laughs> after that i didn't shoot any state games or anything. i was kind of in a depression for for a minute i'm just i'm just letting you know how far it goes absolutely because when you're a part of this team yes you know what i'm saying oh yeah absolutely. so i just i just want to put that out there listen I, I feel you wholeheartedly you know we've been there uh you know the last few years we're just about a state every year uh, you know, I was there. When, uh, I, I can pull up a photo. I was on ESPN, standing in the end zone with other big catch, North Shore and Duncanville. So people were crushed. Coach yeah. Samples was crushed. You know, and they bounced back from that. Uh, those are epic moments. Uh, you know, the uh, John Stephen against uh, Manville, bloodied, just really, really on this guy. And you talk about a game where he stood up and came back. This was, uh, you know, a defense for Manville that had. Uh, you know, seven, eight guys that went on to play Division One. He was bloodied, but he kept coming. Yeah. His resolve, his never quit attitude, and that was the whole team, whole Highland Park on that particular run uh, with Coach Randy and those guys. It was there, you know. So these moments, you you get into them, you know. And a shout out to my guy Matt Davidson, man. Uh, you know, uh, from Top Texas Prospects, my guy. You know, he was totally d bummed when uh, Duncanville lost. You know, he wouldn't even talk. You know what I'm saying? And, and for Matt to not talk, you have to know Matt. But hey. for him to not talk, yeah. you know, and he was stumped. But, you know, and I get in like that, too. These these uh, last three or four years with South Oak Cliff, I've been around uh, those games and on the sideline. Elated when they won. It's it's a special feeling. You get you get entrenched with these teams when you follow them very heavy, you know. And, and Coach Jay, uh, talk about that a little bit. You're in the media here now, and a lot of times you're you know 
when you're not running a camp or running an event, uh, you, you're a shooter as well. Just talk about what you kind of look at and when you're, uh, you know, focusing on an athlete. Now, I, I don't even want to come at it from the perspective of, you know, where these guys are. I'm basically new when it comes to shooting from the, the lens of steel. I've been doing, you know, video for many years and just kind of recently the last three or four years kind of fell in love with, with the steel shots. And I, I'm learning, so I bug the heck out of Greg and anybody <laughs> I know that will teach me, you know. Absolutely. And I just I enjoy doing it for fun, you know. I, I don't consider myself, um, you know, there yet because, I, like Greg started out with the Canon, I have three cameras in my bag, you know. I'm I'm in Wisconsin now, uh, working, and I got my cameras with me. You know, just the funny thing is I just drove past a baseball field with a cow pasture right behind it. And I was like, no, stop, stop, stop. He's like, well, what, what's the problem? And I'm like, dude, I got to get a picture. <laughs> you know, I have to get a, you know, because I'm always looking for that shot. Right. Um, so, you know, being on the sidelines is, I, and the funny thing is, I'm like, what would Greg do? You know? <laughs> Um, so I kind of say, okay, I, I want a shot that's different, but unique in the sense of from, from my lens, how I view the game. Right. Um, and it, it's so much fun and frustrating because when you don't get the shot you need because of the type of camera, the type of lens, it's like, oh my goodness, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. but I'm not ready to make that, uh, you know, heavy purchase into a, a, you know, more expensive camera. Right. Because, again, for me, it's, it's just fun. I don't want it to be uh, a livelihood thing, you know. Right, right. Uh, but it's so much fun, you know, capturing those moments. Videos are great, but it's, it's something about that, that still picture that, to me, it, it lasts, and it's like that moment. You can relive that moment over and over and over in that still. Um, so it's, you know, it, it's, it's, and you, you know, you shoot as well. Absolutely. So, um, it, it's, it's a necessary, and, and I think for me, it was um, always, you know, be ready in the moment. So if someone didn't show up, I'll do it myself. Right. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. So it's like, it was a necessary skill. And then having kids that play sports, you know, it was like, okay, I want to make sure that I captured those moments, you know, for them uh, and for myself, you know, for, for whatever reason. Absolutely. So, you know, yeah. Greg and I were talking about video versus photography the other day. And I know how to do video. I go on uh, big game hunting trips, uh, all over the world with this guy and i do the video for the hunting trips and greg was talking about getting into video with with football and i said i, I just can't right like i i love and 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 he touched on it i, I i'm in love with the photography right with football right um video it's like you're rolling hoping something happens photography i feel like i, I you know, I, I am getting set up for the big play. I'm on, you know, it's, it, it's like a, it's like a one snap in time thing. Um, just something about it just, just stirs in me, man. I just love it. Absolutely. And, I mean, and there's a difference and, you know, uh, coach men mentioned, you know, I, I kind of got into it, uh, this, the photography thing through Greg and, you know, I tap into him anytime something like that happens, but, you know, for me, the photography is, is more about featuring the athlete. Uh, you know, I try to get there early and take a few shots of them if I'm watching a certain guy, if I know him already. Uh, you know, from a scouting perspective, headshots and things like that to go and to coincide with my articles or anything that I'm writing. Or, you know, it's mostly a feature thing. But I, I've fallen in love with the, the, the great shots through his work. Uh, you know, and it, it just – it when I see it, and, and, you know, in other guys' work, you know, we talk about uh, the Jawan uh, Davises, the, the Chris Jeters, uh, you know, uh, Jeremy, you know, Hayes, guys like that that I work with on the DR7, uh, you know, Ben, 
Spicer. Those guys, you know, it's 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 a different eye from a different perspective of those guys. And uh, you know, these are some of the guys that are heavy in the DFW media that kind of come along since you've been there. And, and but you know, it, it's it's a hammer shot's different. Hmm. If you hadn't seen it, just go to his Instagram. It's different. The athlete's different. I mean, you, you just came off a recent uh, state championship run with the Den Guy softball team. I was able to follow the games through whatever hammer was, was shooting. And you can tell the attitudes of the players, uh, you know, how they're warming up. You know, if they, they look really focused. It's like you're there, you know, and I was able to follow in and dig into that, not even being in the stadium or, or down at state through your work. Just talk about that run just a little bit. I'm, I'm glad you mentioned that. Uh, shout out to Geyer Softball, the girls, uh, 38-2. and two. Um, You know, I kind of lucked upon that too. You know, I, I – I hadn't really shot softball before. Right. Um, I'm I'm now at uh, Denton Geyer High School. That's where I'm 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 working. And uh, a buddy of mine says, "Hey, my sister uh, plays for for Geyer, and she's pretty good. And um, they have a pretty good team." I said, "Well, man, hey, maybe I should shoot a game." Right. So I just went out there and shot a game. I'm like, "Wow, these 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 they're pretty good." Right. So it it kind of kind of fell into it and um uh i just want to uh, finley is uh she she she's the pitcher uh she's a freshman and um she went 38 and two you know her her future is the sky's the limit on that um they're coming back with 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 the majority of the girls that they went to state with um they went to state they came out second in state so um, I'm just um, – I'm elated about that. You know, I, I found something different. So the thing right. is that it's after basketball, it's after football, it's in that little window right. where I can, you know, spend a lot of time right. doing this. Right. And also I want to uh, – there's, there's also another team called uh, Glory, right. which is Gold, right. uh, 14U. Right some of these girls come off of that team absolutely and i i got the opportunity to shoot those girls uh because of them seeing my work when i shot guy high school absolutely and and glory's one of the better organizations in softball they put a lot of girls in college uh some of the girls on you know that if you watch softball, I, I, I usually wait till they get to the regional part. The <laughs> Oklahoma team, I bet you some of those girls well, come out of that I, organization. Yes, I saw Mr. Coleman yesterday. Yeah. His, uh, Shout Jay, out to Jada Coleman. Jada yes. was signing autographs. The weather um, kind of hindered that. I think tomorrow she'll be signing, so I'll probably be there to get my autograph and picture Absolutely. with her. Absolutely. But I did get to talk to her father, yes, right. Mr. Coleman. Yeah, yeah. I, uh, when Friday Night Glory had a chance to cover her when she was at the college, she's – Yes. One of the best players. You hadn't seen Jada Coleman. Uh, you know, I'm sure you can find it on social media. She had the big catch on the wall, center field. Uh, you know, that was a great play. I, I, man, I wonder who took the picture of that. You know what I mean? Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> now, let's talk about uh, uh, Eric a little bit uh, before we move on to get into uh, the meat and potatoes of teams that you'll be following this year. You mentioned that your son – uh, got, has gotten a chance to walk on at Oklahoma. Just talk about his process going through high school and the recruiting process sure. and what you guys did with that. Um, so, you know, he so he was on varsity as a junior. Um, he uh, he's real tall. He's about six four, but he's undersized. He was about two oh five, and they they needed him on the line. They wanted to put him on the line. They thought he could shoot the gaps because he's very fast. Mm -hmm. um, from a recruiting process, probably not the best thing for him, but at Highland Park, it's about the team. Absolutely. That's what the team needed. That's Absolutely. what he did. Right. Um, on this year, they moved him to the outside, uh, uh, D end, mm -hmm. still undersized. He came in about 215 to start the season, um, but had a great, uh, great senior year. Um, had interest uh, in spring from Air Force, got an offer from Stetson down in Florida, um, Amherst, um, uh, oh, uh, Georgetown mm -hmm. was talking to him for a while. But then it got really quiet. And what we noticed is with the transfer portal, a lot of these teams would come in, they'd come talk to you, they'd have some interest, right. and then they'd wind up going you know, in a portal and filling the need. Right. So it was to, it was it was. Uh, it was like a cheerleader tryout every day, right. you can imagine. Absolutely. Um, but eventually, in the very end, I, we're really happy with the way that it turned out. And he got an offer from Oklahoma to be a preferred walk-on. And uh, when you said I flinched at Denton Geyer, I mean, at, uh, at 
at Den Ryan. That's that's old news for me. <laughs> Den Geyer makes me flinch now. I think about last year. I think about having to hold my six foot four son while he's crying at the yeah, end of the game. I was there, and I said, "Hey, yeah. man." You, you ran into a once in a lifetime quarterback. It right. just happens. Right. It just happens. Right. Yes. Um, his his relationship with uh, Mr. Hawkins, which trained his son. Yeah. And uh, so. Yeah. So let me talk about that. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. That's, that's a big part of the process. Absolutely. So uh, when my son was in sixth grade, he wanted to play seven on seven. I told his mom, "Do not put him in seven on seven. This is not going to be a good experience for him." And she said, well, "What do we do?" And I said, "Well, let's let's let him work out with a trainer." Yeah. And so. Um, I went to go talk to Mike Hawkins, and he said, yeah, my deal's five days a week or nothing. And so he started working out, and Kyle had the best attitude, worked out with Mike all the way through high school. Mm-hmm. And, man, Kyle's got fantastic footwork, great skills, all all because of Mike. Right. Now, also as a part of that, I mean, I, I consider Mike an extension of my family. Absolutely. I think vice versa. Right. So now I've been able to watch his very talented son, Mike Absolutely. Hawkins Jr. Yes, sir. And um, – so when I'm not shooting Highland Park, I'm usually looking for an Allen game. Right. But as you probably know, he's not going to be at Allen. Next right. year he's going to be at Emerson. Right. So I'll be looking forward to shooting some Emerson games right. next year and watching him. Yeah, uh, and, uh, Malik is, as well is yes. going to be one of the top corners uh, yeah. in the class 2025. He's already got uh, probably uh, right under 10 offers. Uh, will be double-digit offers when the season comes. Uh, you know, speaking of Emerson, I think they're uh, a team that's been going to be slept on. But the, those two additions, uh, they got some team, uh, you know, some guys coming back on that Emerson team. They may they may shock some people. You know, I, I think, you know, I think Mike, you know, we're talking about Mike Hawkins. Uh, he's going to the Elite 11 as well. Yeah. Uh, one of the top dual threat quarterbacks uh, in the uh, country, not just in the state of Texas. Uh, Frisco Emerson High School he also has a brother, Malik Hawkins. And Mike Hawkins is their father, uh, who's one of the uh, better trainers. Uh, he, I don't think he's position specific. He trains everything pretty much. Yeah, I mean, I, so – if you were to ask him, he'd say he's about getting from A to B. Absolutely. You know, he's all about efficiency with footwork and getting right. from A to B. And, you know, a lot of what Mike does, you know, I think to call him a trainer, sometimes that sounds like. More of a um, mentor. Yeah. 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 More of a mentor. Right. I mean, he really, the majority of the kids that you see him out there working with on Saturday are just there. Right. He's just there helping them. Right. And, um, you know, he, he's a he's a wonderful person. He is. Mike Hawkins Jr. is a fantastic young man. Yes, sir. And so is Malik. Yeah, I've had a chance to meet them uh, uh, when they were playing with 9 4 at one of the uh, tournaments this year to talk to uh, Dad. I, uh, you know, met Mike when he was a sophomore at Allen when he first started coming on the scene. And he's progressed so far since then. It's just a maturation, and his games come full circle, and that's why he is where he is. Uh, but, you know, I, I I definitely think that something that you have to look into is just talk about the process of your son's development because you, you spoke about him being undersized. Uh, you spoke about, uh, you know, we talk about these things every week on the On Your Mark show. Coach Jay can talk about this as well, uh, the process, mm-hmm. you know, of, of getting recruiting. And you listed off the schools. The thing I'm hearing is his grades, his academics, were way up here, and his his athletic ability caught up with that as well. And how did you guys impress that on him to stick with it? So, I mean, a couple of things. Um, as a as a father, mm-hmm. um, I, my son ran with a good group of kids, right? Um, and they were they were all played football as well, mm-hmm. and grades was important to mm-hmm. that group of kids, right? Um, and so it just it just sort of through osmosis that that you know that's what they focused on i got to give a huge shout out to the highland park uh staff you know i i thank them because i credit them for letting me just have fun with my son and enjoy my son my son was a lot more afraid of the highland park coaches than he was me (laughs) you know i promise you when he went out on friday night and he had choices to make right he was more worried about i would not want to go talk to the coach tomorrow morning Right. Rather than me. So right. they instilled that in him that, you know, that it is very important how you carry yourself and what you do. Right. Um, so that was always a really important part. He did have good grades because he worked on it. Absolutely. Um, and, um, you know, again, he told me this past weekend he was out with some people at in Norman. Yeah. And I said to him, you know, that last night I was talking to him and I said, hey, I, I know I don't even have to say this to you. Right. But I'm going to anyways. Yeah. You got to be so careful with what you do and everything. I said, you can be in a car and this. He said, you're right. You don't have to say that. I know. Yeah. I know. Absolutely. You know, but that's a big part of it. 
and at Highland Park, they take that very, very serious. Um, they they are really wanting to raise young men. Right. Well, I think that's a big picture that uh, you know people don't get a chance to hear about, and so that's why. I, you know, I ask you about that. Uh, but before we switch gears, mm-hmm. the walk-on process. Everybody yeah. gets enamored, uh, you know, with getting a scholarship. And, and Coach Jay, I'll come to you when Eric's done about the walk-on process. Yeah. Talk about that decision sure. going in that, the advantages to it, and, you know, the opportunity that he's getting, opportunity that he is getting right. to go to one of the best uh, colleges in the country. You know, and I, yeah. I'm, I'm always a Hook'em fan. I respect Oklahoma, <laughs> but they steal our kids. So that's what that's the only reason I really don't like Oklahoma, because yeah. they steal these Texas kids. You know what I'm saying? But uh, talk about the walk-on process yeah. a little bit. So so Highland Park last year had several walk-ons. Mm-hmm. Okay, they had uh, Brennan Store, who was yes. quarterback and Absolutely. district MVP, yes. going to uh, Vanderbilt Yes, um, as a walk-on, for right. a walk-on. Bo Lilly, um, big Texas football name yes going to duke is a preferred walk-on right. uh, jackson heist going to vanderbilt is a walk-on um and so for for kyle he had some smaller teams some smaller schools e- even a d1 offer but just smaller he didn't really want to sacrifice where he wanted to go to school absolutely so to him he wanted to, he he was he wanted to take that preferred walk-on and go to university of oklahoma which was his choice to go to school anyways right and um if, if you're not familiar with what a preferred walk-on is, mm-hmm. it, it's um, essentially you're, you're, you have a spot on the team. You don't have to work out and try out for a spot on the team. You have a spot on the team. Everything is the same except for the financial piece of it. Right. Um, so I would certainly like for him to get a scholarship. Absolutely. But, <laughs> right. but at any rate, um, it, it puts him – and what I what, – you know, he's already put on – in one week he's already put on six pounds – and I said, they're going to get, they're going to get, you know, he'll be, by the start of the fall, he's going to be six foot four, 230 pounds, right. running a four, five. Right. And I said, now you're in the arena. Right. You know, now you're, you're, it, you have your opportunity to show right. these coaches um, what maybe they didn't see because there weren't the star ratings there. And yeah. I know that they, you know, th- that whole job from a coaching perspective where they're now having to look over the entire country. Right. 365 days a year, you know. Absolutely. It, it, it's a great opportunity for somebody like my son who was under the radar to come in and, and prove himself. Absolutely. Coach Jay, uh, you're in the game consulting uh, week to week with these guys. Talk about the advantage of having, uh, you know, a preferred walk-on opportunity at a collegiate level. Man, the preferred walk-on is, is such an uh, interesting um, thing that we, we don't really touch on enough, but it is a unique tool because, number one, your leverage is either you have a very, very high GPA, you have a very high skill set, but not enough for them to say, hey, we want to financially, um, you know, give you everything, but we see enough to help you come in and say, hey, get developed, and then hopefully you can transfer into uh, academic money. But then you look at the financial piece, um, there was a kid I just helped, you know, who parents were, you know, in a great position. And I've helped a few uh, parents that were in, in really good positions to say, hey, we don't really need the ac- athletic money. You know, the, the, the education is paid for regardless. So the preferred walk-on is a way to go, and you can go and play at the school of your dream, you know, because it's it's not something that, is uh, financially obligating to the school, to the, to the staff, but it's giving the kid an opportunity to go and, you know, be a part of a, an amazing coach, an amazing team, whether it's Oklahoma, Arizona, whatever the school, um, and then, you know, transfer it from there. You know, I have a kid at, at TCU that has been there three years on a preferred walk-on, and he's doing a great job. Next year he should – you know, more than likely get on the field. Uh, just sent one to Arizona State uh, right out of high school, uh, committed, you know. So it, it is a great, great tool, but parents have to understand that just like his son, you know, and the, and the other kids, the academic part was the leverage to help push that for the coaches to say, yes, this kid checks all the boxes outside of, you know, meeting – everything we need athletically, but everything else checks off. We understand that there's 
you know, the developmental part that's that's going to come. But you got everything else. So um, prefer a walk. And, and, and I, I try to explain that to, to parents a lot, that at the end of the day, it's, it's how you look at the landscape of recruiting, right? Athletic money is not the end all be all. There are a ton of different ways to skin the cat. It's, you know, having to identify it early enough so you have options. So that's the most important thing. Identify all the options and then strategically plan, you know, how that's going to work out. But prefer walk on is, is, is a, is a great and unique tool to use. Absolutely, I agree. And uh, the biggest thing is you get an opportunity. Uh, you know, Eric, without, yeah. without seeing your son, you're saying he's six four and hovering around two hundred five, two fifteen, coming off the edge playing DN. Uh, when you get into a serious program, they look at projections. So you know, we're talking about a guy that could be two thirty easily in a yeah. couple of years and coming off the edge in a wide open offense. Uh, you know, of game coming off the edge and defensively, that's what they're looking for. Right. So. At Oklahoma, he'll be 230, like you said, by the fall. That's like, what I'm it, saying. It, it's nowhere. He'll be 230 by the fall. And they've moved like, him over to those, Cheetah. Those programs, he's going to be 230, 235 before, you know, fall ball starts. Right. And once he gets his feet wet, you know, and, and he matures and grows, right. then, as a matter of fact, go look at Oklahoma State roster. There is a kid, uh, um, I cannot remember his name right now, but He's a starter, and he's a preferred walk-on. So it doesn't matter, you know, whether you're a walk-on or, um, you know, athletic scholarship guy or whatever. If you can play, then you have an opportunity to get on the field. Absolutely. All you have to do is go in, put in the work, put your head down, keep your grades up. There's a kid, right? I think his name is Calibus or something with a C. I have to go back and look it up. But. He started all last year, and he was a preferred walk-on guy. Yeah. I mean, and that's – they'll find a spot for you. Uh, the ability, the skill set is there, and that's what you're looking for when you're looking trying to get an opportunity. You know, it, it doesn't matter. The opportunity, the opening is there. And, you know, as long as, you know, the athlete gets in and, and gets himself in, like you said, get entrenched in it, you know, picking up six pounds is nothing to sneeze at. You know, and like Coach said, being 230 – you know, with that frame, he's going to be coming. You know, they made a position switch, like you said. Yeah. You know, those are the things that you look for. And, and that, that's a great thing, and that's why I wanted to go into it. We talk about these things every week, about getting an opportunity, finding a fit, finding a scheme that fits you. Those t- three things seem to be the process that he went through. Yeah, and one of, and one of the things that I know they're going to love about him, he said already – it's this plus some um, since he's been there. But at, at Highland Park, one of the reasons why they're so successful is because everybody does their role. Right. They're real focused on just doing your job. Right. You know, and trust. And, you know, at Highland Park, they don't teach people. When, the way that they teach people to tackle is go hold them up. And there'll be three guys there, four guys there as soon as you look around. Right. And it's he's going to carry that forward with him into college. He's going to, he's super coachable. He's going to know what to do. Um, and that's all from Highland Park. Absolutely. That program, you know, they're, they're fantastic about, and they've got a lot of people that are all pretty equal. Right. Think about it. Right. So it really sometimes comes down to who just knows their role a little bit better. Right. Yeah. I, I, and I've had a chance to be at some of those games. We talked about the great game, uh, at a, a the first Frisco in the Star, a great playoff game. Highland Park came out slinging it. You know, Star was you know a guy I'd wanted to see up close and personal. He played a great game, but it's just when you run into that special talent that is Jackson Arnold, Landon mm-hmm. Sides. Shout out to my guy going to North Texas now. Um, it was just a you know a, a buzz saw. You know what I mean? And let's dive into the schedule a little bit. We'll start with you, Hammer. Uh, you got some big games coming up. You've already put out the schedule. Uh, talk about a couple of those games that you're looking forward to heading into the fall. Um, yes. Um, so the the first the first game, um, I'm just going to start off with I I do uh, I basically cover the north, which is uh, Prosper area, Denton. Um, I I cover all four high schools for Denton, and um, which is Braswell, uh, Den High, Geyer, and Ryan. Um, I'm going to open up uh, this year with Ryan and I think uh, New Bronzeville, if I'm not mistaken. They're probably going to play it in Waco. So I'm probably going to do that game because 
the next four is just hot coming out of Geyer. So <laughs> I, I got to I gotta get some Orion first, you know. Um, um, Geyer is going to open up with, uh, with Heath, which is Coach Webb. Right. Um, so um, I'm not going to be at that first game. But the second game, Olito comes in. You know, to guy. Right. So, so that that's hot right there. We're going we're gonna to see what what's going on, yeah. and how the team is, and, yeah. and everything. And then the um, third game is Lancaster, which is nothing but athletes. Right. We're going to Lancaster, right. so I got to do that one. Yeah. So, uh, and, and Coach Paul, uh, yeah, shout out a, to a, my guy, great, Coach great Paul. guy. Yeah. Yeah, we'll, um, we'll probably be there as well. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Absolutely. So, <laughs> so that the second game and the third game um, is, is is prosper. So I I got I got to cover that one. So uh, in between that, I got I got a couple games because I'm trying to I'm squeezing in some Thursday night games and stuff. So uh, my first game is going to be um, um, I think it's uh, Texas. Um, Game day, uh, Texas Arcana game day. Uh, Mr. Smith, Morgan Smith, is my buddy. Uh, um, he's he's a big Longview guy yeah, and no stuff doubt. like that. No Shout doubt. out to him. Absolutely. But uh, Longview is going to come in to play McKinney. Really? So that's a Thursday night game. Okay. So I'm going to do that one. I might have to tap in. Yeah. For that so one. I they think got, he, they got, he, he might have to come and yeah, shoot that one right there because so. that's yeah. that's going to be a really good game. And that's going to have two of the better running backs in the, in the country. Yes. So so, so yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm let me throw that one in there. Yeah. And then also I'm going to throw in uh, Boyd McKinney Boyd, my quarterback Nick is is going to be uh, playing on a Thursday night. They're going to play uh, Byron Nelson. Absolutely. So I'm, I'm throwing those those games in there, some Thursday night games before my, my Friday night games. Right. Um, um, so I'm pretty much my my first you know five five games, and then and then my my back end is a little different uh, depending on what's going on in situations. But um, I I will be getting in uh, uh, Braswell, which which is uh, a whole new coaching staff. Yes, and I, I need to get out there and introduce myself. Uh, Coach Coach Gurley is coming from from Prosper, uh, mm-hmm. so a shout out to to Coach Gurley. He will be on the defensive side at, at Braswell. Also. Um, I'm just throwing out some coaches. Uh, Prosper has a new high school this year, Walnut Grove, which is a 5A. Uh, Coach Anderson, who came from Wakeland, he's going to be over there. Also, the new head baseball coach is Mark Kane and uh, Coach Gardner for basketball. I just wanted to get that out there real quick. But that's basically my first five. And then as it goes, I I have a Denton High game that I'm throwing in there. Um, and then the last five, as it gets closer with playoffs and different things, my schedule changes a little bit. Absolutely. But, I mean, just thinking about some of those games that you just talked about, they're going to be great. And, uh, you know, starting off the season hot, like you said, you know, it's, it's going to be a lot of eyes on those games. That McKinney Longview game is going to be a big one. Uh, I, I think, uh, you know, they're they're young and – They've been young the last couple of years, right? right? So those guys are juniors and seniors. Yeah. I think the key component to that long view for that long stretch is the quarterback position. Yeah, well, that the, they've kind of not been at the same level with the wide receiver and running backs that they've had. But Taylor Tatum's, uh, you know, if, depends on who you're talking to, number one and number two. You know, my number one, you know, if you're asking me, is Caden Durham. Uh, I, I just seen a lot more of him, and, and we – Myself and Coach Jay, we drove to Longview to see Longview Lancaster last year. That was our first time. If you hadn't been to listen, if you hadn't been to Longview State, yeah. and Coach Jay, Coach uh, Jay will tell you, that's probably should be on your bucket list. Yeah. That Longview Absolutely. crowd, listen, amazing stadium. amazing stadium, and that was a great game. We got a, a big dose of Taylor Tatum right then, and he's as advertised. So, and then uh, McKinney, you know, Marcus Shavers, you know, shout out to him. He's one of the best coaches that people don't talk about. Uh, they've got some really good DB talent over there, and they got one of the top running backs in the country. Yes. So that's going to be a barn burner, you know, and, and that's the reason, you know, we have Hammer in the building is he knows and he's he's in touch with where these games and these players and where they're going to be. And before we get out of here, talk about the Hammer Media and the collection of athletes uh, that you've, uh, you know, selected to wear the brand to be Hammer Media feature. Uh, you know, you talked about Nick uh, from uh, McKinney Boyd. He's a top junior quarterback. Definitely a guy that you need to know. I had a chance to see him at a camp 
and, uh, and get uh, you know a really good eye on him a, a few weeks ago. But talk about the Hammer Media, uh, you know, collection of athletes. Well, you know, I kind of select our, our, you know, the kid's personality. You right. know, uh, I, I don't go just in in his ability on the field. Um, him outside the field and how he carries himself. It really draws me in. And um, it's like if you want someone to wear, you know, your brand, how would you want them to present you? Right. And and that's kind of how I look at it. Um, there is a DB who, who is a sophomore coming up at Geyer. His, his last name is Cobb. And uh, we know his brother, his older brother, Absolutely. that played running back at Kendrick. Geyer. Yes. yes, sir. This kid is remarkable as far as in the classroom. You know, we knew his 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 brother was like a valid Victorian. You know, so he he, he carries that same uh, in the classroom. He speaks with a soft voice. His speed and his athletic ability is off the chart. Right. So um, he's one that will be wearing some right. of my gear. Absolutely. Um, um, there's an al- also another one. Uh, um, I call him X Xavier, mm-hmm. who is from 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 Africa. Yes. And um, I got tips on him early, meaning that they like Hammer. You need to keep your eye on this guy. Yeah. When he was a freshman. Yes. yes. And he he's got tons of offers right now. Right. And believe me, this kid is so polite. Yeah. Every time I have I send him a picture or something, he's he's so thankful for that, and 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 I I, I can't wait to he's going to be wearing some of my stuff too, just because he's such a great kid, right? You know, and um, I have a couple athletes. Uh, I have one that's going to be wearing at, at, at Ryan, the quarterback for Ryan. Absolutely, I, I want you guys to keep your eye on this young man. No doubt. Um, you know, he played receiver last year as a sophomore. He's coming in as a junior. Right. He will be the starting quarterback at Ryan. Yes. And then I also have a, a up-and-coming young ones. Uh, I right. got a couple freshmen that will be probably starting as sophomores uh, that will be wearing some of my gear. So that's that's just a couple right there. Well, definitely, I appreciate you both for tapping in. This won't be the last one. We might have to bring you guys back in before the season starts. Uh, to kind of talk about some more things. Uh, again, this is the On Your Mark Show, proud and sponsored by Epic Sports Apparel. Every play, I compete. Eric, give out your social medias where everybody can check everything out, and then, Hammer, you give that, and we'll close up. Yeah, thanks. My uh, Instagram is Eric, E-R-I-K-E-N-C-2, and that's where I post. Um, uh, Creo GMH is my gram, and my Twitter is Creo Hammer 17 Absolutely. Listen. You got to check these guys out. This is, you know, they kind of gave you a blueprint, you know, for young photographers, young videographers, and guys that want to get up in the game. This is what you have to do. Uh, you know, it, listen, it, when you say get down and dirty, this is what these guys do. I've actually seen him in the dirt, <laughs> on his knees. All positions, that's the reason he's the best in the game, as well as Eric. I had a chance to see some of your work this week when you follow me back on Instagram. Coach Jay, be safe. You'll be back next week in the building. Uh, you know, yes, man, we appreciate everybody tapping in, liking and sharing. The Thank last the last two weeks have been over a thousand, almost fifteen hundred views. I expect this one to be along the same thing. Oh, we're gonna March. get twenty five. We're gonna do it. Twenty five you know easy. Absolutely, man. Let's Follow us on the Fishbowl Radio Network each week, live from the Fishbowl. The On Your Mark Show powered and sponsored by Epic Sports Apparel. Have an epic Wednesday. We'll be back next week. Hey, ready, set, go. It's time to hit the mark. This that show you need to know about. We set ourselves apart. Sports talk at the pinnacle. We got all the knowledge covering every level. Helping these young men get to college. Got the coverage of a DB. Vision of a QB coming at you like a DN. Let all of that sink in. Working in the weight room. We can't take no days off. Doing drills and they not looking. That's what make us stand out. Don't worry about how much time is left. We got it planned out. Execution elite footwork. Nasty when we running routes. Accuracy off the chain. We've been on it from the start. Reaching for the sky. Hitting the bullseye. We on the mall.